Boom. Yes, we are live. Hi, William Quigley. Hello, Joel. I think the last time we met, we were in Vegas, pre-COVID. That's right. Uh, we had you on stage with us at uh, virtual or at uh, World Crypticon. Yeah, and uh, little did I know that you guys were world famous game designers. So, is this your first game you guys have built? Uh, together, it is. This is not my my first game rodeo. Actually, back in 1996, I built a. Um, I partnered with a coder um, that was building a very rudimentary multiplayer game room. So, you know, we're talking about the beginning of the World Wide Web, and people could play. Um, cards and backgammon and chess and checkers and we called it classicgames.com and in 1997 i sold that to yahoo and it became yahoo games so uh, oh. and i produced some other ones along the way and some other apps but uh, jointly this isn't uh, this isn't a game blockchain heroes is a digital collectible trading card set on wax yeah and yeah. i don't have any game <laughs> yeah true. um <laughs> 1996, I was playing, uh, I think, Leisure Suit Larry. Oh, yeah. Which uh, one? One, two, three? One. There yeah. were several. Yeah. It's what taught all the kids how to do uh, online gambling and uh, other vices That's on true. the internet. That was hilarious. Uh, so uh, tell me about the inspiration for Blockchain Heroes. Yeah. So, you know, back in February, we were having some conversations around NFTs. Well, we started doing NFTs on our on our podcast, and we introduced something called proof of listening. And if you listen to the podcast, sometime during the show, we would tell a link to a URL where you could go and claim that NFT for that episode for 72 hours only. You had 72 hours from the time we dropped the podcast to go and claim that NFT. And we did some stuff at, uh, at some events. We did an event in uh, Miami at the North American Bitcoin Conference. Mm. We gave out uh, an NFT there, NFT number one. Uh, we gave out uh, one at uh, Washington Elite. So we were diving into these NFTs and we were having a conversation around, um, you know, Joel, Joel mentioned to me, he sent me a message in February sometime and he goes, hey, what if we do some stuff maybe on OpenSea and we create some, you know, uh, some NFTs around blockchain people in the space. We call it blockchain buddies. Maybe we mint 10 or so of each one and we put them up there. And, and I was, and I said, Oh, kind of like garbage pail kids. And it's <laughs> like, yeah, maybe kind of like garbage pail kids. And then five days later, wax and tops, you guys made that announcement about garbage pail kids and tops. And we didn't have any clue that that was happening. And so, then we did a virtual conference where we did virtual blockchain week. We put on a week long conference like we kind of shelved it. And then once we, you know, we're paying attention more to the tops GPK thing, we were like, dude, that's blockchain buddies thing might not be a bad idea, but I really don't like blockchain buddies. That sounds weird. Let's maybe figure out a better brand name for this. And then uh, we came up with blockchain heroes. Yeah. Who did the artwork? Cause it's great artwork. Yeah, it really is. We actually, we hired five different artists. We auditioned, um, I want to say we, we 60 applicants. Um, we auditioned 35 of them and we selected five. And um, there's 50 heroes in the, uh, in the entire set. And there's 10 in each of the five classes. There's celestials, champions, defenders, boosters, and creators. And so we assigned one artist to do all 10 heroes mm -hmm. in that. And they're all over the world. One's in Argentina, one's in Ukraine, um, really talented. One's in El Salvador, people. one's El in Salvador. Indonesia, one's in yeah. Spain. So they did, they took the vision that our team gave them. It's actually my son, uh, Zach, is the creative director and the one who came up with, you know, who, what are these heroes like and what are they all about and wrote all the copy for the back of the card. So he would give direction to the artists and then they would do a sketch for us. And if it needed fine tuning, we'd fine tune, they deliver the final art. And then Travis is the one who created the variations that you see the heroes on and he recruited his son. So we've got two father son teams here that are the core of this project and they created these uh these golden furies and these legendary shock waves and mythic stars and all the the vibrant uh feel and rarities that we have on these all right so explain a little about the uh uh the uh 
pack opening mechanic. You know, uh, you, you know how uh, wax does it with tops, very similar to the old, you know, baseball cards and gum, open it up and get a random assortment. How is it going to work with you guys? Yeah, very similar. And while I'm, while I'm chatting, maybe Mr. Joel Kami can uh, get it queued up. So what we've done is we actually we're chatting with your guys' team, how it was done. And then if we could redo it and rethink it in a new way, because when you guys are opening up the packs, the pack sort of tears open and the cards go. <laughs> we have superheroes in our packs, right? So superheroes wouldn't just come out. <laughs> they would explode. They would be like, they want to get the hell out of this pack. And so yeah, we got an amazing uh, video editor to come up and, and with a, and some effects to create this really new cool opening. Are we yeah, going to see it? Oh, great. Great. Yeah, there's two, there's two packs. There's the Titan packs that have five cards in them or the uh, hero packs that have five cards and then the Titan packs that have 30 in them. And so let's go with the Titan packs because more cards. Love it. Exciting, you know, and so they are going to be random, right? There's there's a total of 125,000 cards in the set. There's 50 heroes. There's five class cards. And then there's multiple rarities. Um, and I could show you those as well. Yeah, I'd be curious because, you know, a big part of this, and it's all gamification, is just the, uh, the unique number of cards, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you got 50 heroes. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so what you're looking at here is a base card. This is a, a common um, card for uh, the Genesis hero. Yeah, again, great yeah. artwork. There's, uh, there's our common magic man. And uh, these are the backs of some of the cards where we've really put a lot into character development here and uh, creating um, some lore around them, a little bit of humor you know, around them, and uh, you'll be able to tell the rarity from the back of the card. There's another uh, uh, common. Travis, why don't you take over here, and I'll just kind of go through them. Yeah, right here, this is our comic version. We wanted to throw an homage to the original comic books, and so you can see the paper crease and the, and the way that the color sort of is set up. We put a black border on those, so those are the uncommons. Next up here, we have the rare version, which is the third rarity, uh, this is the Da Vinci version, which you can tell is an homage to Mr. Leonardo Da Vinci, who was one of the great artists and thinkers of our time. And then this is uh, this is basically our uh, animated sketch, which kind of throws an homage to Da Vinci and your guys's uh, or the the tops animated sketch that they had. Mm -hmm. So much homaging. I like to homage. It's oh, it's the fans homage. love the the sketches and then the you know the the reveal of the of the original card. Uh, the the artwork is fantastic. Uh, of uh, course, as uh, it, with each variation, the cards are more rare. So now we're up to this is our legendary shockwave. You know, when one of these heroes busts out of your pack, it's going to be like, oh man, what is going on here? This is. This is so cool. And uh, and then they get even more rare from there. This is our uh, most rare cards that are in the pack. This is called a Mythic Stars variation. Mm -hmm. And only in the whole set, there should average four to five of each hero that ah. will come out of the packs. And uh, finally, post-sale, once everything is uh, is sold out, we're then going to drop 100 Golden Fury cards, two of each of the 50 heroes, to 50 random wallets that made a purchase of packs during the sale. 100 um, different wallets. We have this two of each one. Wallets. Yeah, we, we, we're yeah. going to go on, yeah. And Travis, tell them who this is. And this, and this right here is the Mona Lisa in our set. This is the one of one electric Genesis. There's only one of this. There's no other electric cards to mine Bitcoin. You need electricity, right? So this is the Genesis mm. electric. And this is available only in one of the hero packs, the five wow. card packs. Love it. Uh, uh, regarding the NFTs, you guys did a 
what was it like the first NFT you did it six months ago or a year ago, whatever. Yeah, January. Yeah. What was that NFT? What chain was that NFT released on? Uh, that was on Ethereum. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing it on wax. Now you did it on Ethereum. Then mm -hmm. uh, what drove that change? Well, let me say this. Ahead. I'll say this first is we went, to, we went to ETH Denver two years in a row. And there were some really amazing people that are putting some stuff together for the Ethereum blockchain. They were, they were creating some dungeon level games and different things you could do. And so we were, we caught up in the game mechanics of what some of these folks were doing <clears throat> with Ethereum. And then we ran into um, um, Patricio Worthalter, who has created the proof of attendance protocol. And so we worked up, we were chatting with him to sort of help us with the proof of listening protocol idea that we had. And so we were utilizing that, but then William, the gas fees started getting ridiculous on Ethereum. Deja vu. They're ridiculous again. Yeah, yeah they are. They are. Yeah. And you're we... selling a, you sell a $5 pack and right now the average fee is a buck 50. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. And, and, and then there's the, the weight, right? With Ethereum, it could take longer to get that NFT. Once we saw what uh, Tops did with Garbage Pail Kids on Wax, we realized we now have the mechanism to deliver the kind of value that we want to deliver because it's so fast. It's just, it, I mean, Wax really is made for uh, for digital collectibles. And we the moment we saw that, we're like, this is where we need to create it and we uh, we put together our proposal and submitted it to wax labs and um, apparently the team loved it and you guys got behind the project and, and we're really grateful for that and that the wax team and the guys that run the exchanges uh, jonah at atomic hub byron at heroes market uh you know the, they're all everybody's cooperating to put together this uh build this community and build this product and we did we can't wait to unleash it on saturday yeah we've as you know this will be uh i think it's a, the fourth kind of formal nft mm -hmm. sale that we've done and they uh i i will tell you i hope you can beat the shatner record but that was a tough record you know Top we don't actually one. want to beat the Shatner record. We want to delay the sale way better because we think that giving people the opportunity to buy them all out in just a couple of minutes is a horrible fan experience. And we've seen mm -hmm. the, what we've done is we've been paying attention to what the audience wants. The audience wants delays. They want staggered releases because you get whales in there that maybe have a faster internet connection than some of these other ones. They go True. in and buy all the packs up and then they hold them and sell them for three X on the secondary market. So what we want to do is actually uh, we, we've, we've worked with multiple. So we're not just releasing on BC heroes. We're doing an, a pre-sale one hour ahead of time on atomic hub and heroes.market where half of our inventory is being divided between those two exchanges. And they're going to be able to sell to the users on wax before we'd start our official launch. And then once those are sold out, well, then we have the other half of the inventory on ours so we're giving people multiple opportunities to get the cards that they want so they don't feel left out. And it's not just that. We're okay. also gating the maximum number they can buy. So on both heroes.market and atomichub.io, you'll only be able to put 10 uh, maximum Titan packs in your card at once or 25 hero packs. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're saying it's a lower threshold um, and it's, we don't want to stop the whales. We just want to slow the roll and make sure everybody gets a chance to, to get packs. Um, and so you can go 10 buy, sign the contract, then you can go again, 10 buy, sign the contract, but it's going to yeah. have a little breathing room in there. You know, we did that with Shatner, um, Evan, what was it? Three limited to three, I think. Uh, uh, three cards or three packs per purchase. Uh, it worked fine, and 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 I think it was a little bit more evenly distributed. So I love that about what you guys are doing. Now, how do people pay with for the cards? Wax, baby, all wax. You know the the lore mm -hmm. behind blockchain heroes is these are a, a group of heroes that are fighting the centralizers, right? They're all about mm. centralization. They're all about privacy. They're all about empowering uh, people. And it seemed for us to take fiat 
for these cards was there, you know, there's a paradox there. And so uh, the way it worked out is we are going to be the first entirely crypto sale on the wax blockchain. Uh, yeah, so you exciting. have to buy with wax. And so we're encouraging people to set up a wax cloud wallet. We're encouraging them to get wax from an exchange. Um, and we're encouraging them to help their friends. Yeah. Right. Because this is about onboarding people right. into the space. So teach your friend how to open a wallet, help your friend get, you know, some wax on Bitrix or KuCoin or Changely, send them some wax, say, Hey, send me, you know, a couple hundred bucks. I'll send you some wax so that you're ready to mm -hmm. participate. Cause it's more fun trading when your friends are involved. Yeah. There's yeah. a member on our community. Bob was saying that he helped. He basically was, uh, people were paying him fiat. He was selling them wax that way they can participate in the sale on Saturday and they're so excited about it. He's like, man, I've created all this competition now. So I don't even know <laughs> if I'm going to be able to get cards because I got all these people excited about them. And one of the things that, that we think is so cool about this, William, is the fact that this might be the very first time some people ever hear about blockchain or it's the blockchain heroes. Like what's, what's a blockchain and maybe lead them right. down a rabbit hole to explore so that we, we can help, nurture this whole community and help grow uh, mass adoption so people can understand that decentralization is way more important than having, you know, governments and corporations controlling everything. Well, your guys are, you know, the timing for that and the theme is, is awesome because with DeFi and this renewed interest in DEXs and, you know, decentralized marketplaces, uh, uh, you know, there was a time a couple of years ago when I thought the whole decentralized exchange concept would probably kind of go away because people love convenience and it's easier to deal with a human than it is to deal with a DEX. Right. And yet the DEXs have become so easy and so convenient. We're seeing like Uniswap is probably a top 20 exchange, uh, especially since their volume is not fake, right? You can't fake it on a decentralized exchange or there's no point to actually have fake volume. So I love that. I love you guys are uh, uh, purists and you're saying, let's do this. Oh, that looks like Mr. Wick and Mr. Wick looks a little like me. There's the inimitable Mr. Wick and he is on fire. This yeah. dude is on fire. Where do you see the Golden Fury version of uh, of this guy? He's uh, yeah. he's an innovator in the space, and I've never been better dressed than that than that picture. Well, uh, let, let's be clear: <laughs> that is not you. That is that is That's Mr. True. Wick, and Mr. Wick uh, may have been inspired by William Quigley, but it's an alternate universe, right? These are parody cards. Uh, we're not trying to say that any of these are the actual people that inspired them uh, because, you know, I don't think you, you know, I don't know that you have superpowers, you're, you know, you're pretty powerful in the wax ecosystem, but I've yet to see you, you know, have fire coming from your hands. Yeah. Not yet. I haven't done it. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe I love steam it. from your ears. <laughs> hey, William, let me, can I tell you one more cool thing we're doing to innovate on this launch that uh, has yeah, not yeah. been in previous ones? So one of the problems that we've discovered is uh, when GPK Series 1 launched, there was never a thought in anybody's mind of the mint order of the cards, right? But blockchain mm -hmm. tracks all this. And the community decided that a mint atom bomb prism number one is worth more than a mint number 425 atom bomb prism and so the way that the mints work is whoever opens the packs first gets a ton of number one cards and that's what happened with um, gpk1 happened with the tiger king series it happened yep. with uh, shatner yeah, a little different mechanic there but what we're doing is we're pre-minting all 50 base cards. So the most common cards that one person would typically get the majority of them will all be pre-mined. Mm -hmm. um, now the other number ones for, you know, epics and rares and all those will still drop as the first ones, but we're going to take those first 50 out and then the first 50 wallets to make a purchase after, you know, an hour or so, we're going to airdrop one card to Great. each of those 50 and spread out the love among the community. Yeah. Love that. Love that. And that's what I love about NFTs. They are, they are so capable of being innovated around. I mean, we haven't even gotten into, uh, 
intelligent NFTs that'll be coming in, let's say 2021, where there'll be amazing things you can do with them because they're, these are all basically micro computers. You can program them to do anything you want. So yeah, I wanted to ask your, you about that because I saw you tweeted about it or something recently about smart NFTs. Is there some more that you can sort of shed on smart NFTs? Like, Well, wh what I'll say is this. Uh, of course, the NFT is basically a mini computer. You know, I mean, you can you can program this thing to do virtually anything that you can program to do, because, of course, it's a it's a, a piece of software. So. The NFTs coming out, and a lot of this will be brand driven, will be, um, you know, they'll have little AIs in them. Uh, they'll know uh, uh, how many times they've been traded. And maybe when they get traded the 100th time or the 1,000th time or the 1 millionth time, uh, you're going to have something revealed that you didn't know existed. Maybe no one did. Uh, the, the, um, there'll be a lot of brand stories here, uh, you know, launching of videos. Um, so the, uh, the NFTs, as long as, uh, a programmer has got imagination and as the standards get better and better, you know, an NFT standard that incorporates geolocation, for instance, um, and we're seeing some really cool standards development with NFTs now, um, it's going to mimic some real world stuff, but also Every time you digitize something, you enhance what you can do with it, right? Because it can move at the speed of light. It can react. You know, it can do one thing on one browser and another thing on another browser. So um, uh, some of these things were going to be helping to roll out. Mm. Uh, so stay tuned. But as I said, think of think of just your imagination. And, and the video I, I'm, I'm going right now. I mean, Travis, can you imagine if every time a blockchain hero is traded and changes hands, it levels up its power a little bit, right? So the more times it yeah. gets moved around um, and sold or bought or traded or whatever, certain powers unlock in that mm -hmm. card. Oh, that would be great. And then combine a couple of cards together to do some stuff and trade. Yeah. Right, oh, yeah. I so, I mean, this is, you know, uh, cards, even physical card trading is fun, right? You read the rules, you see what you can do with them, whatnot. But of course, in the digital and software world, uh, you can do things that just weren't possible before. So I'm, I'm really excited about where NFTs are, are going. They're gonna be a lot more fun than trading, you know, little uh, digital uh, native tokens of the blockchains. Um, where does, or is there uh, a plan after blockchain heroes will assume it's going to be super successful you guys have made the mechanic really fun what is there something else or is this a one and done for you travis why don't we talk about the decks yeah you, you know I, this is not a, this is not a one and done uh, originally when we were thinking about doing this we were saying we have some really really big ideas around nfts that we've not even revealed to evan doesn't even know them and we said what we want to do is we're gonna do this blockchain heroes thing as a as a test to see and gain some credibility in the space so then we can start working with other people well as it evolved it's just turned into this amazing thing and a great you know fan base which is just loves it so this is an ip that's going to last for a long long time as we explore some of these other ideas in the nft realm but one of the things that we came up with and we executed on was something i think that evan mentioned was it's it's, as cl it's close to what you guys were doing with virals but not exactly the same. What we did was we did an NFT Kickstarter and we, and we went to the fan, we went to our fan base and we said, Hey, we got these cards here and we're looking at printing some for ourselves. Who here, who here would want some cards also? And Check like 90 look, look how beautiful these refractor cards are. Love them. I mean, yeah, they're same, absolutely gorgeous. Same company that prints the, the magic, the gathering or, or Pokemon mm. or some one of those brands. And so it's like a real big printing company. And uh, we showed them to the fans, 90 plus percent of the fans were like, oh, dude, I want a deck. And so then over the course of that week, how fast we can iterate as a small, nimble team, we came up with uh, this idea for these physical decks, a Titan deck and a hero deck. And the hero mm -hmm. deck is basically the common card. And at 55 of them, they're going to be all 50 characters plus the five uh, class card checklists. The Titan deck is going to be basically our legendary shockwave version, but a, an amazing still from that explosion. Like the best still is going to be the, is, is the picture that we caught. 
and then 55 of those are going to be printed. And what we did was we, we set these up as NFTs first. They bought the NFT and we did it stacked up like a Kickstarter. So for the hero, Pat, for the hero decks, there was a hundred of them. And for the first 100, they sold for 35 bucks a pop. Then and they, and they sold in like three minutes, three minutes. Yeah. yeah. And then we had the Titan deck. So then there was 50 of those. So for every 100 hero decks, there were 50 Titan decks. And so we went from 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 dollars for those for those hero decks and 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars for those Titan decks. And now those NFTs are still tradable on on Atomic. And we've seen some of them go. I don't know. I think I saw one go for nearly five hundred dollars. And yeah, when so. they give me the dates here, you had the sale when, and then when were or are you still waiting for the physical uh, decks to be? Uh, yeah. To be so the sale was what three, four weeks ago, something. Yeah. We yeah. we offered three weeks this ago, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks um, ago. All, all the decks, seven hundred fifty total, were sold out and accounted for in forty two hours. And then you could see there's some here now in the secondary market because um, some people bought two or three so they could resell them. We're wow, there's a really inexpensive one, a forty eight dollar one. That's right. less than yeah. Yeah, right there. Uh, we're waiting on the samples um, to come back from the printer. And then once we've got those, we've got all the artwork ready. Um, and so what does somebody do? They've got the uh, the NFT, it's like the bearer bond, and they do something with it to have the physical item shipped to them. Right. They will, they will get instructions to send that NFT to a specific account. And then they will be instructed to fill out a form with their name and their mailing address so we can send it to them. Then that deck that they get, that physical deck, will have two QR codes on it. One of them will be when they open it, because we want them to make sure that they only claim the deck if they're keeping it. There'll be a QR code they scan that gives them the ownership NFT. The other QR code that will be in there will be the bonus digital NFTs that they get with the decks. So if they purchase a hero deck, they're going to get two new variations on their favorite blockchain heroes out of the 50. We're going to pick two of them that are included in every hero deck. So now you've got another rare variation that only come with these decks. So there'll be 500 of each of those heroes. And then the Titan decks are going to come with five heroes in a an animated variation that we've not yet released so there'll be 250 ever of these heroes in that variation so we're plugging it back into the original digital trading card system and giving them something physical i mean i cannot wait to get my hands on on these, these heroes it's myself it's like you guys are uh during this covid crisis you are the nft moguls like <laughs> Just coming up with great, great concepts. The idea of what you talked about, which is a, a Kickstarter or a, you know, a pre-sale type thing, we have wanted somebody to do that for a long, long time because it's such a great, simple concept. Now, did you um, did people buy those with wax again only yep, or were they only able to wax. use fiat? Only wax. Only yeah. wax. Yeah. And By the way, been... let me tell you this. This concept is so much better than going to Kickstarter, sending, paying with your credit card or whatever. Now you get an email and that's it. And in six months, maybe it comes, maybe it doesn't. But the ability to, if you needed to, to monetize that place in line, right? And give it to somebody else makes your willingness to buy it in the first place just a way easier decision. It's a much better model, and I and I love the fact you guys are 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 really doing it, and and you sold out, right? And we did it. We did a quick. We we're sort of thinking of it as a nifty start, right? It's like taking these NFT, and 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 we had never talked to. I don't think we even ever talked to Evan about that or anyone about that. We just said, here's an idea of what we could do. Let's do that. And again, with us being so nimble and being a small team. You know, we don't have layers of legal and stuff you got to go through whenever you're a small startup. Right. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to get the Wax Cloud wallet, which is really easy to use, as you know, uh, and then um, incorporate in the Wax Cloud wallet the uh, ability for someone to present that, that to bear a bond NFT to then put in your name, rank, serial number so you can get a physical thing sent to you. You can do it all in the wallet. I, 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 I make it even easier. 
Yeah, we, we in fact, you know, we're looking forward to the day that there's a, a true mobile wallet, right? So that all yeah. of the cards that people have, they can pull it out and, and go through them and trade them with their yeah. friends wallet to wallet easily. And you know, the problem, and it may change, but the problem has been uh, uh, Apple for sure, Google to a less extent, they are just allergic to people actually being able to trade what they own, right? So, oh, if it's in the little video game and you can't take it out, fine. But if you can take it out, they throw a hissy fit. And uh, I've always figured they'll keep that policy until they develop their own platform. And then suddenly we've seen the light. Now do it our way. Well, uh, even if they could, even if it wasn't something you could trade, but it was just a display, right? Just so you can true. have them with you and carry oh, them. So you don't that, have to be. That is exactly right. Yeah. The, there is, we just funded a project and, and, and William, I think I ran this by you briefly, but out of Wax Labs, we have a team that puts together a mobile app. And what they did is they made it link in with your Wax Cloud wallet, all of your login information. They actually display your NFTs. This will be out shortly on both iOS and Android. But they even link into the Delphi Oracle system, ping all the databases of the marketplaces and actually give you value of your NFTs right there in your pocket. That's great because once you've got that, you can screen cap any of your NFTs and turn them into wallpapers. Yeah, yeah, or I mean, yeah. even something more simplistic, right, guys? Like one, the most powerful thing that I think is missing, right, from all this NFT stuff is a quick, simple social share, right? Like I just click, hey, I want to show everyone on Twitter, right? And I click one click, boom, I grab it from IPFS. There's my image. I can at least share what it looks like to everybody in a second, right? That seems like low-hanging fruit. Now, of course, yeah. there is things that go into it, um, but it's not something that's insurmountable or even it's it's coming. I mean, that's I'll tell you NFTs will become big whenever folks can take their mobile phone and show off and brag about all yeah. the cool things that they have. doesn't matter if you can trade it. doesn't matter if you can buy it. doesn't matter whatever. All I want to do is I want that ego boost by showing my friend that look at this kick-ass thing that I have. And they're going to go, oh, my God, that's kick-ass. How do I get it? And they'll go, let me show you. And right. you get it this way. Yeah, it's very without that action. display feature, it's, we're, we're, we are missing that key aspect of this whole ecosystem right now i yeah. uh, evan brought up something ipfs so where are the images your guys images will they be in ipfs yeah oh yeah awesome yeah awesome, it, you're in guys. fact it's your your wax team is the one that's helping yeah. us with with all you the guys stuff. i love that and i'll tell you why uh i don't think the average joe who is buying crypto kitties ethereum based crypto kitties understood that's those images were stuck on their server. Like they were not in IPFS. In mm -hmm. fact, most NFTs, uh, I'm actually not aware of any, but ours, where we put them in IPFS, they're yours, right? It's not, you're not relying on some Amazon server. Uh, we often don't uh, uh, advertise that enough, but I think we really should. These are truly decentralized. You know, if all of us, God forbid, go away, your images are safe in a distributed architecture around around the world. Mm, so, wait a second. Uh, I think we put all of ours on my grandma's Pentium too. Yeah, I I <laughs> think a lot of people did. Whoops. So I love what you guys are are, are up to. Uh, and and like I said, you're like NFT moguls. Um, so tell me about the reception you've gotten for Blockchain Heroes with your your audience who are obviously very, very crypto friendly and, and love you guys. Well, I think they've been, it, it's, it's, here's William, here's our guiding, here's our guiding principle on this whole thing. Deliver delight. We want to deliver delight to mm -hmm. our fan base. And as a result of doing this, see, Joel and I are, are marketers for 20 plus years each in digital marketing. And so what we've done is we've taken all of our expertise and all the things that we know about marketing and psychology and consumer behavior and UX, UI and place it together into this whole thing. And we've got a whole system now at this point and it's all about delivering delight and it's decentralized delight, which is even better. Yep. Yeah, it's you know, uh, I was going to make a different comment, but maybe it's now wrong. But I was going to say what's great about you guys is, you know, your typical blockchain geek is, you know, a guy who's coding away and whatever. And I think for a lot of reasons, that's why a lot of the products are kind of uninspired. They're like very coder centric. But you guys have come up with something fantastic. And I 
don't think I'm wrong. Neither of you guys are like professional software developers, right? No, we're, we're marketers. We're entrepreneurs. You know, we've yeah. built our careers out of creating products, you know, of, in, in so many different realms. You know, we're both authors. We're both speakers have been in the social media marketing realm, affiliate marketing, internet marketing, blogging, podcasting, you know, uh, YouTube, live video. And so you know, we've had the opportunity to stack a lot of skills. And we're also really into like our friend Evan here, business development development. How do we yeah. create partnerships in the space? And so one of the things we've done is before we ever um, release a pack is we've created special promotional hero cards. Like we created one for Cointelegraph that they released um, to and had people sign up that are readers for their site. We worked with Bobby Ong at CoinGecko and he made a card or that you could redeem when you get their candies. And I don't know if you saw this or not, but last night we dropped a bomb on the attendees to our community meeting. That's one of the other things we do is a weekly community meeting. We had 150 of our people there and through partnership with Tops, we reimagined their iconic atom bomb character and they actually, Aww. their artist painted this and Atomic Atom found his way into the Blockchain Heroes Megaverse. Um, oh. And this card wow. was dropped to every wax wallet that had either any GPK card or pack or a hero's promotional card um, and blew them away. They absolutely loved it. And then oh. um, we dropped a variation on them as well oh, nice. with various odds of getting. So like this one right here, this Golden Fury, out of all of the cards that were dropped, four of them were this golden fury 8000 total cards were dropped approximately yeah. and four four people got those and this is our mythic one i think what 20 of these were created yeah about 20 there's so those are going species. on the secondary market william those are going on one of those around 6000 wax for that legendary one the, the shockwave explosion wow. uh the mythic ones going for over 2000 and we, 2000 dollars you guys, this is like direct response television where I'm sitting going sham wow here. You you guys are are really showing people that the ability to innovate, to start a business, to actually do it with on top of all of this infrastructure that's already built, you know, you and without without asking anyone's permission, you don't have to go to Apple and go all through the business of trying to get your app listed. It's like, hey, I'm gonna do it. I can rely on all this infrastructure out there, uh, marketplaces, blockchains like Wax, the Wax Cloud Wallet, uh, the, the game mechanics that exist. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it would be a great show to see at one day when live events exist again, you guys at a crypto conference saying, how to become your own you know entrepreneur and do really well with a few certain skills you know marketing some some inspiration maybe an understanding of video gaming you know how many video gamers there are out there who you know don't got a pot to piss in you know little indie video gamers who make three bucks a month on apple or or google with their game that what you guys are talking about is is real entrepreneurship and I, I just love it thank you i think it's an nft launch blueprint is what we've sort of created yeah and as joel mentioned every every wednesday doing that community meeting where we have a full-on powerpoint presentation that joel uh puts together and uh, we go over and, and share all the news and, and we keep up and there's been there's several i mean there's more than a handful that have been on every single one I think there was like 20. Right. I couldn't even get into one. It was on the first one. <laughs> and last night, I think we saw at 158 at most on last night. And very few would leave. Like when the show was over, there was like 152 left. Well, right. now you got me excited. I'm going to go on to the next one if I can get in. So it's limited to 150? Well, no, no we, it was the was, one they had at a, it was limited to 100. Yeah. And obviously they, they ramped it up after that. And I was like, at four o'clock, to be fair, right? I was not like a minute late and it was still already filled. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah, William, just for, for your knowledge, like I wanted to give these guys a big shout out on I've never seen anybody build a community in blockchain faster than them. I mean, their numbers are, are already past all GPK, right? Just to be clear, like their Telegram channel, I think, is about to hit a thousand members, which it is. If you guys again, aren't wow. in the Telegram yet, wow. t.me forward slash BC Heroes, there's 983. <laughs> 
um, in there right now. We'd love to, to pass by a thousand. Yeah. And, and really what it comes down to is we wanted to create something that we would want to collect. And we do yeah. want to collect. You know, I don't know if the guys at Tops are buying packs and opening them themselves, you know, other than, yeah. but we yeah. want to open these packs. We want to collect these cards and we want to see the faces on people when they open them and see these cards jump out. In fact, we're going to go live Saturday morning um, at 1130 Eastern, half hour before the launch to build up to it. And then we're going to be live while the product's launching. We're going to be inviting people to come into the Zoom oh, room with it. us to open packs. And like, let's do this together. This is a community thing and nothing's going to thrill us more than to see somebody open up a pack and see a myth or a legendary pop out. Oh, it's so exciting. It's like back in the day in the case opening sites with CSGO and a guy would get a Dragon Lore, you know, an $18,000 gun and head explode. Uh, you guys just screaming, uh, live streaming. It, it's super exciting. One thing I think uh, uh, I want to see innovation around going forward, and maybe you guys, as we wrap it up here, maybe you guys have done some mirrors. Uh, uh, trading, obviously you want to trade because you might want to have a complete series or something with, with, with Shatner. There were shards that you would uh, use to compose a complete card, whatever. Uh, a lot of people trade just because, hey, they can make a profit on the, uh, on the item they bought. Um, any, any thoughts on that, on, on uh, uh, things that would encourage people to want to trade or even to need to trade their NFTs? I think it was that one idea that we had earlier as, as we were talking about with those smart NFTs, you know, oh, yeah. I'm just going to start wrapping my head around that to start leveling up those cards. And the thing about NFTs, William, is to me, it's like, you know, these traditional cards, they're all rectangles, right? They're, every one of them a rectangle. Well, in the digital world, you can think outside of the rectangle. And, uh -huh. and it's not necessarily an NFT that has a front and a back. Our idea is maybe that NFT has four additional sides and it's a cube. And there could be information I that you can it. plug into those, to that pieces of the, of those cards to level up, you know, and then different items that you can get to then level up your cards. So people are going to congregate around their favorite cards. I think they're going to want to collect more and more of those, find ways to combine those cards, make the strongest, most powerful characters that they can mm -hmm. for then future gameplay that is going to be evolved over time. I love it. I love it. Well, any parting thoughts, guys? I think we've uh, hit our deadline. Yeah, we're just we're we're grateful that we uh, that that wax. You know, I actually owned some wax previous to us discovering this because I was like, this. I saw what you were doing with OP skins. I'm like digital collectibles are going to be a thing. And so I actually staked some and they're still staked. And so I'm, I'm stacking wax myself because, you know, you we are. we think this platform is here for uh, the long haul and we appreciate um, your support. Evan has been amazing. Uh, Till and, and Heinrich, your developers are amazing. They're so brilliant. The guys that are building um, ancillary products, you know, Byron and Jonah and Fabian, the, it, what a great community and, and all oh, yeah. our fans. Kurt, Kurt Braggett doing a bunch of awesome stuff with exploration around things, man. Awesome. People. Yeah, I got to talk to you about that, William. He's doing some funny, cool stuff in, in the NFT space. The, yeah. the intelligent NFTs. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you after this, but Saturday, noon, Eastern, atomichub.io and heroes.market. We think they're going to go very fast. So stack your wax, have your cloud wallet logged in yep. and be ready to go. And be here. Awesome. Congratulations. Deliver delight. Yeah. Here awesome you guys. Awesome. You guys are really setting trends. I love it. Thank you. Thanks, William. Thanks, Evan.